Welcoming Louis to the Hall of Fame is Dan Issel. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Dampier. Can't tell you how happy I am to be here. Um, this is just great. I think many of you probably have heard of Fran Jutkins. I know all the players do, and most of you people who got uh, probably got your accommodations and your tickets through Fran. So anyway, and she also takes care of us new inductees and. Keep, tries to keep us in line on time, get us to the right places. But she also has other responsibilities. And every time I saw friends, she kept saying, you'd better not go over five minutes. <laughs> and so I, I took her to heart and I said, I won't, Fran, I promise. So next time I see her out in the hallway, she said, don't you go over five minutes or I'll lose my job. <laughs> okay, I'll go back and work on it. I try to get it on right around five minutes, scribble some things out, go out, see Fran. She says, you better not go over five minutes or I'll get fired. Well, the people who spoke before me, you obviously <laughs> do not care about Fran's job. <laughs> Okay. This for me is a time of thank yous. First of all, I want to thank the Hall of Fame for including me in this elite club and allowing me to join my former teammates. First of all, from the University of Kentucky, my teammate, my four-year roommate, Pat Riley. And with the Spurs, played with George the Iceman Gervin. And with the Colonels, my teammate artist, the gentle giant, Gilmore. And then there's Dan the Big Dummy Issel. <laughs> I thank my parents for the short time that I did have them. Um, I lost my mother when I was um, 16. I lost my dad when I was 18. And that was an unfortunate experience, but I also was fortunate in that I had an older, my brother Bill, who was about nine years older. I had my sisters, Catherine, Barbara, and Suzanne, who were about 11, 12, and 13 years older. So they took me into their arms. They gave me a place to live in the summer during school break from UK. And they supported me through all my collegiate and professional career. To them, to all of them, I give the greatest of all thank yous. <clears throat> I thank my daughter, Danielle, and my son, Nick, for putting up with my daily game, my game day routine. Uh, it's not right for young kids to come home from school and have to be quiet while their old man takes a pregame nap. <laughs> but I do think I'm so proud of both of you and love you. <clears throat> I respect my stepson, Rob, for all.
always and always being there for your mom. I thank you for that. I have five grandchildren, Brittany, Griffin, and Hannah, and also twin grandchildren, Ava and Ab Abram, who are here tonight. I just want to thank all of you for being my grandchildren, and I love all of you so much. And I also have, uh, don't like to say this, but a great-granddaughter, <laughs> Riley. I don't know if she's named after you, Pat, or not. <laughs> I went to Southport High School in Indianapolis. Um, a few years ago, they did me the honor of, I was the very first person who had their number retired in the whole school's history. And I am so proud of that and wanted to make that a part of my display in the Hall of Fame. I wanted to have my, my high school, Southport, in the Hall of Fame and Back then, I had a coach named Blackie Braden, and I want to thank him for preparing me for the great Adolph Rupp. He helped me prepare and worked with me after school every day. After he found out that I was signing at UK, and the biggest thing that he taught me or told me that I had to do was to move my shot out to 20 feet. And for that, I thank you, Coach Braden. I feel very fortunate to have played for the great Adolph Rupp. At the start of the first practice I went to, we had a 30-minute shooting drill. It wasn't a drill, you shot on your own. And when I say you shot, you didn't just shoot and then walk up after the ball and then walk out, pick another spot. You actually shot, trotted, you didn't have to break, go fast, breakneck speed, but you had to go get your rebound and then trot, dribble it out, take another shot. And I can tell you at first, I hated that. But what I did, I tried to make it fun, and every day I started counting my shots, and I, I made sure I shot 75% or better. Now, that's, they aren't all from 20 feet. I couldn't do that. But, you know, different range shots. And I'm sure that this is what improved my shooting. And so I thank Coach Rupp for that and much more. With the Colonels, we had several coaches, uh, some good, some bad. <laughs> but before the 74-75 season, the Colonels hired the greatest coach ever in Hubie Brown. The only problem was that I had been traded to San Antonio. <laughs> so I went down there with an attorney, Bruce Miller, negotiated a contract, came back, and in a few days I found out that the deal had been rescinded. And that was because Hubie Brown wanted me to be a part of the team, wanted me to stay with the team. So that's my first thank you to you, Hubie. Now, now I'm in negotiations again with the Colonels. I asked for the same deal that the Spurs had offered me, but we couldn't come to an agreement. <laughs> in the next few days, I got a call from Hubie Brown, and he said, I'd like for you to come over to my house. And I had never met Hubie Brown on the driving on the way over. I thought, uh-oh. 
<laughs> I might be headed back to the Spurs. But when I got there, he wanted me to come in and sit down and told me that he wanted me to continue to hold out, that my position with the team would be the same even if I had to miss a few days of practice. And in a few days, I got a contract signed. So for that again, Hubie, I thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Hubie brought his organized and detailed plan and molded us into a winning team. And in that 75 year, we finally won the ABA championship. And for that, Hubie, that's your last thank you, but I thank you for doing that. <laughs> well, then the next year, uh, I'm sure we would have won again because we had a, a veteran team, but we missed the main player on our team this guy. For some reason, he was sold to another team and we didn't have a very good, good season that next year because we missed him so much. We tried to replace him, but it couldn't be done. So people still come up to me and they say, boy, I wish the Colonels would have joined the NBA with the other teams because you guys would have been really competitive and maybe had a shot at the championship. But I tell them, no, we wouldn't because we didn't have the big dummy any longer. <laughs> also want to thank Mamie and Joe Gregory, who were the original owners of the Colonels and um, they got the Colonel started and got us into the ABA and brought bas pro professional basketball to the city of Louisville. You know, it's a pretty well-known fact that professional athletes at the end of their career have a lot of trouble adjusting to everyday life. I have to say, though, that the last 33 years of my life have been my happiest. And that's due to one person, my beautiful wife, my rock, Judy. Yeah. I love you so much. And I think that about covers it, Dan, except <laughs> that's not nice. I only called you big dummy. <laughs> but I want to thank you for being a friend through all these years. And your name is Dan the Man Issel, Dan the Greatest Issel. <laughs>